Hello, welcome to my tech fam. One of the reasons I like to be a YouTuber is that sometimes I get really great suggestions. And one of them suggested to try the lazy annealing of the PLA. If you're not familiar, we can improve the quality of the PLA with annealing. Mostly the temperature resistance, but some other properties too. There's a process when you heat up to some temperature, skip it there and then slowly leave it cool to cool down. There are different uh, methods for this, but I have some problems with uh, this process. And uh, one of them is that actually during this method, the object shrinks and actually it shrinks differently in X, Y and Z directions. But sometimes in Z direction it actually expands. And the other is that, uh, that I don't want to use my wife's oven for this. Uh, it is not too accurate anyway. So here comes the lazy annealing. After the printing, I will heat up the bed to 100 degrees Celsius, cover the objects and leave it there one hour. And after this, I will turn off the bed heating and uh, leave it to slowly cool down. Will they survive this process? I'm not sure. Properly objects with a lot of bridging or some bigger overhangs will deform too much. I'm not sure at this moment, but uh, I will do this with the regularly printed objects and I will compare them with the annealed versions. These are my standard objects I'm using on this channel. This one will be for the temperature test, the most important here. And I have here some not so standard. So this one is for the bridging. And here I'm actually curious if it will survive uh, the annealing process. Probably not, it will deform. And this one here is for the shrinking test. Everything will be printed on NS3 S1 Pro. Here you can see my test objects printed all at once. And I'm using the Amazon Basics PLA for this testing. The printing will be finished in approximately 3 hours. Standard VLA settings 210 degrees Celsius on the nozzle and 60 degrees Celsius on the print bed. And the reference group of the test specimens is finished. This is the second group of the objects and I have to be here when it will be finished in approximately 1 hour to heat up the bed and to cover it. Printing is finished a few seconds ago and now first I will set the temperature of the bed to the 100 degrees Celsius. And I set the timer after one hour I will turn off the bed and leave it to slowly cool down. And now after one hour I can turn the bed heating off. I leave it now to cool down and tomorrow I will check uh, what is below. Good morning and let's see what we have here, <laughs> maybe bigger mess of plastic or something like that. Now I can see there is some small gap here, but anyway the heat goes up, so... Okay, let's analyze it. This one is for the impact testing, uh -huh. each of them already removed for the bed and this warp very much, a lot. So basically they, they deform, they warp. Interesting, I thought this will deform a lot, but the bridging test uh, was successful almost. Okay, anyway, we will see the strength, especially I'm curious about these ones for the layer version and for the tensile test. This one is for the bending, this is also stride grid test. Okay. The annealed version I marked with this red line just in case. And uh, more or less they are all usable. I will measure later the shrinking. In worst condition is this one for the impact test. And uh, don't forget, uh, you can see a lot of warping, but this is completely solid inside. So if you use some, I don't know, 20 or 30% infill, probably you will not have so much warping here. Now let's measure the shrinking. This is the original part without annealing. And uh, let's try, start with the X direction. And I'll try to avoid measuring the elephant foot. 30.03 in x direction, 30.00 in y direction, and 29.87 in z direction. Now the annealed version, and take a look that uh, it is also deformed, so we don't have that squareness anymore, but um, let's measure it anyway in x direction, avoiding the elephant foot, 29.15, in y direction 29.25, and in Z direction, it is hard to measure bit because it is also deformed, but usually it expands 31.49 millimeters side by side. The tensile or pulling test with the horizontally printed objects, and these holders are CNC machined by the PCB way. And now a new version.
Visually there is no big difference between these two types of the objects, uh, they broke very similarly. And now let's check the layer attention with vertically printed objects and I'm starting with the regular PLA. And now annealed version. And again very similar breaks in all four cases. Now I noticed some warping on these objects too, so in holder was under small angle and this could be the reason for the lower brake load. The hook test where we have the combination of two stresses, one is the pulling one and the other is the bending and I'm starting with the regular PLA. And now the annealed version which is a little bit warped but uh, very minimally. And visually similar break in both cases. Three point bending test, distance between supports is uh, 50 millimeters. And I will place this load one by one and I will measure the deformation after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. And here you can see the annealed version is a little bit shorter because of that shrinking. And this is the deformation under 1.25 kilograms. 2.5 kilograms, 5 kilograms, 10 kilograms, and now removing all the load. And basically, I cannot see any visual deformation on them after this test. As a impact test, and we will see now if the annealing helps with the brittleness of the peeling material, but I'm not even sure how comparable are these two test objects. Look how big warping we have here on this uh, test object. Peeling. Zero position. Anneal peeling. Well, for the first look, both very brittle, but let's analyze the footage. This is the zero position of the hammer. This is after breaking the PLA test objects and this is after annealed PLA. And in difference in height we can calculate the potential energy which is used for the break. This is my temperature test in the oven and I have several experiments in the progress. This is the PLA, annealed PLA, easy ABS and high tough resin also by Sunmoo. Now I can see some warping on this annealed version but I hope it will not have significant effect on the result. And the temperature I will follow with this cooking thermometer and I want to record the temperature of the first deformation. This is a time lapse speed up 25 times and on PLA I noticed first deformation at approximately 54 degrees Celsius which is normal for the PLA material. And for annealed PLA I noticed the first deformation only much later at approximately 150 degrees Celsius approximately here and then the auto safe turn off the light but I will analyze the images anyway. I will stop the experiment on 180 degrees Celsius. I can see some deformation minimal on height of resin too. Well, they are both deformed because I tried to remove them until they are hot and none of them can survive 180 degrees Celsius, but definitely this lazy annealing helps with the thermal resistance. And now my regular creep test where I am measuring the deformation distance between two reference surfaces under the constant load and I have uh, three experiments in progress, at least we have some comparison between them. So this one is the easy ABS, this is the PLA, this one is the annealed PLA and this is some resin material. The load will be 1.25 kilograms as always. I measure the distance and tomorrow I will measure again to see what is the additional deformation. <laughs> In the meantime the weight from the resin fall down after 10 minutes. But so far the smallest deformation is on an ill PLA. I measure them daily and this is the deformation after fifth day and very minimally but the smallest deformation is on annealed PLA.
Let's analyze the results in this Excel table, which you can download from mytechfund.com website. And let's start with the creeping. So in this table, we can see the results, uh, directly measured values between two reference surfaces. And uh, what we need is actually the difference between two days. And that's what we can see in this table and presented on this graph. And here you can see that the PLA reduced with the creeping on the second day. But what is more important information for us in this case is that the annealed version has less deformation under this constant load. On the next graph, we can see the 10 side test of break load. And here you can see that annealed version was a little bit stronger compared to the reference PLA. Now the layer adhesion test, and this is the only test where the annealed version was weaker compared to the PLA, but actually there is no reason that this annealing makes the layer adhesion weaker. Now I noticed some warping on these test objects very minimally, but this could be the reason for this uh, lower break load, because here we can see some bending stress too. The hook test, and here the annealed version was approximately 10% stronger compared to the reference PLA. C-point bending test, and uh, this is the deformation after 30 seconds on the given loads, and small values are better, of course, but the more important information is uh, this, where we can see the deformations after 130 and 60 seconds, and again we can see not only that annealed version was uh, stronger, less deformation on this test, but also less creeping, especially we can see that here under 10 kilograms, so this line is not completely horizontal. The eyes of the impact test, and yes, the annealing helps reduce the brittleness of the PLA. And the temperature test, and this is the main reason why would you like to deal with this annealing, because uh, regular PLA deforms on approximately 55 degrees Celsius, which will not survive even the hot summer day inside your car, but the anneal version can survive even some boiling temperatures too. But we have to deal with this deformation, shrinking in X and Y direction and expanse in Z direction. Sometimes you can try to compensate this in design or in a slicer, but uh, the deformation is not always equal. Sometimes the object warps and deforms. And now conclusions. Well, this lazy annealing method works, basically all mechanical properties are improved, but the improvement was not so significant that I would bother with this method. Now, improvement in temperature resistance, it was significant. So definitely, if you want to print something for your car inside, it will deform on hot summer day if it is from regular PLA. And this annealed PLA may survive even this temperature too. Now we have to deal with that deformation after this annealing. You know, shrinking in different directions, in Z direction it expands, sometimes it warps. So if you can solve this problem, or you can just in case reprint the object if it will deform too much, in that case this method could work. Now I have a question for you and I hope I will get some useful suggestions too. Uh, have you ever heard about the annealing in the water? Because I was reading something about this and maybe I would like to try that method too, if somebody can confirm that that method may work, you know, placing the objects inside, I don't know, near boiling temperature of the water, the heat is uh, more equal, not like on the bed from the bottom too. So I'm curious if everybody has some experience with this, should I try that method too? Anyway, uh, any other suggestions are welcome, you know, comment section down. Thank you for watching and happy printing!